Manny was a bronze medalist in Beijing. She threw a personal best by four metres to storm into the uh, bronze medal position at the uh, tender age of 19 um, and announced herself on the world stage. A little later on in 2011, she competed in the World Championships and won the gold medal and became the world champion. Uh, a fantastic result. Um, she again threw another personal best uh, and then moved on to London. We last caught up with Maddie earlier this year and had a chat and she was sharing with us a little bit about her hopes and aspirations and also in terms of who her greatest competition um, is. So to continue that story, I'd like to welcome Maddie Hogan to the stage. And for those of you who have met Maddie, she's got a really, really firm handshake, so uh, she crack a walnut with that right hand, no trouble. Okay, Maddie, um, let's find out a little bit. We've had a function at the Sydney Opera House, we've had a bit of a chat. Um, what happens next? Hopefully dessert, David. But, um, <laughs> so next on the, uh, on the agenda for uh, myself and my coaches, we've got World Championships coming in July of uh, next year, which isn't that far away, and that'll be in, in France. So at the moment, uh, we haven't had the, uh, we haven't been able to take too much time off from training, and I think uh, two months was, was long enough, maybe a few weeks too long. So it's, it's back into things now to, to qualify and get ready for World Championships. Sorry, I didn't give that question very well, didn't I? What I meant to ask was after you left the pre-Olympic thing, you'd gone to training into Wales. Let's take us through the, the pre-training in Wales and the lead up to the event. Well done this time around. <laughs> so in the lead up, lead up to the big event, um, Australia took their team into Wales to do a pre-departure camp for a few weeks over there to acclimatise. Although the, the weather was, um, funnily enough, better than it was in Melbourne when I left. Uh, I don't think I, I took my rain jacket out once. So it was nice to, to get over there. We got some really good training under the belt. Um, everything was going was going really well and I'd say on par with, with you know, everything was going according to plan. Um, and, and we went into the village, uh, I would say, not feeling the best. On the day that I arrived in the village, I went in to have an MRI on my back. Uh, we, we had a little tear there. So leading into the games, um, into that final week, I actually didn't pick up a javelin for six days. So things didn't go, things did, weren't going too well, but um, we, my coach and I had discussed that we'd done enough work prior to that point that, um, that we did all we can and, and we were happy with, with the lead up and, and the training as far. She's good, isn't she? She's building up the adversity, the back was no good, hadn't thrown a jab on. She's just, <laughs> and one arm, half throw so far. She's just building up beautifully. At this stage, can I tell you, out of 10 athletes, eight through personal bests, one through a world record. That's out of 10 athletes. That's an extraordinary, extraordinary um, round of throwing. So there's a little bit of pressure mounting on our Maddie. So coming to the last round, Pikeart throws 38 and a half, doesn't need to throw anymore, she's already thrown the world record. Goodkova throws uh, 38, she can't improve her position, so she's in second spot, having broken the original world record sitting in second. Uh, and Maddie at this stage is fourth by about three centimetres. Take us through the last throw. You've gone over to see Coach, what's happened? Yes, yeah, so I went over to see John and, and he wasn't much assistance at that point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just throw him all my Yeah, he just said, just do what you do. And I said, well, what is that? You're the coach. <laughs> so he, um, he, he sent me back onto the runway and said, you just do whatever you, if, whatever you think you can. And I just remember thinking, there's no way I can finish fourth with a Chinese chick in third. No good. So, no good. So I had to, and, and I, I, and this is, and I remember thinking back to Beijing, I remember thinking exactly the same thing. I stepped onto the runway and I thought, well, I may as well give it all I've got because I'm going to take a little bit of time off javelin after this, and uh, this will be the, the very last throw. So that's exactly what I did. I gave it all I got, and um, what was the distance I threw? 38.83. <laughs> See, I'm glad he's done his homework. So 38.83. So there you go. So I beat the Chinese chick. And I remember turning around after the throw was measured and looking at her and she went, oh, well. <laughs> well, I tried. <laughs> that deserves a round of applause. That's a fantastic effort. Uh, again, context for you. Uh, 
Mally is a very humble person. That was her PB, so she became the uh, ninth of the uh, ten people to throw a PB or a world record in that particular event. I don't know if there's a hurricane behind them or not, but it's an incredible amount of pressure for four years of your life to then walk up and have one throw, uh, and you're in position four. Um, so to pull out your PB, I think, is an outstanding effort. So congratulations, man.